What is up, you sexy little mother hubbards? Uh, how are you doing? Quick 4 p.m. video for you this afternoon. My thoughts on this Gary Lineker situation. So, if you're not aware, Lineker has found himself in hot water again for mocking Grant Shapps. Now, Grant Shapps, if you're not aware, he is our defense secretary, which when he was given that role was something of a scandal in and of itself because the guy doesn't have any concrete experience in armed forces, which I think the last two or three defense secretaries have. But also he was seemingly only given the role as a reward for being loyal to Rishi Sunak. Now there was a lot of defense of giving him defense secretary at the time saying, well, look, he's an all rounder. You know, he's got loads of experience in this role and that role. And I remember thinking at the time, no, 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 he doesn't. He's just been moved around a lot. That doesn't mean that he's a well-rounded minister. That doesn't mean that he's got a breadth and a depth of experience any more than it would do if your mate Dave had been a recruitment consultant, an estate agent, worked on a market stall and been a mechanic. And then somebody said to you like, oh, should he be defense secretary? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's adaptable, isn't he? You could put him in any situation and he would uh, uh, pro probably leave that job. <laughs> <laughs> Go on and do something. Anyway, Grant Shapps criticised Gary Lineker and Gary Lineker replied back saying, that's a bit rich from you and referred to him as four chaps Shapps because Grant Shapps is infamous for having used pseudonyms, fake names, for having misrepresented himself, pretending to be somebody called uh, Michael Green was it and Corin something or other. He was alleged to have been updating his own Wikipedia entries to try and remove mentions or allegations that he had been secretly running his own web marketing business without declaring it while serving as an MP. So Grant Shapps is just basically, he's just a sort of joke minister. He's a figure of fun. Everybody knows this stuff about him. And it's like, frankly, the fact that Rishi Sunak gave him any ministerial role, let alone giving him defense secretary with no experience of the defense industries, that in and of itself is enough to make most of us just laugh at the state of the state. But now it seems like it's sort of like, it's like two scandals have met. There's this whole BBC and Lineker thing, and now there is the Grant Shapps thing. Anyway, the way this story is being reported is quite interesting and quite sort of illustrative of everything that's wrong with British media right now. Because here you have a minister who, you know, I've covered the things that he's done. That should be the story. That should be the scandal. But instead, that story, that narrative is pushed over here. And instead, the story becomes this BBC contractor who is, according to some sectors of the media, breaching his guidelines or breaching his contract, his commitment to stay somewhat politically neutral. Now we saw this yesterday when Jonathan Gullis, who's another uh, MP, suggested that Gary Lineker was breaching the guidelines once again, which to my mind fundamentally misunderstands the nature of contract law and these types of guidelines. Like we've kind of been through this thing already earlier this year when Lineker said something on Twitter, he was hauled over the coals. You had the Daily Mail, the Telegraph saying, oh, you should sack him. He's got to just take him off the screens. But the inconvenient truth was that in Lineker's contract, it will say something about remaining politically neutral while you're presenting on the screen. But if you are a contracted in presenter who is responsible for presenting sports updates, that puts you in a different realm to their sort of news and political pundits. And so then, yeah, inconveniently enough, like on his social media, he's kind of free to say what he likes. But it's still a little bit like, like, why are we talking about what this ex-footballer sports presenter is saying privately on his own social media when this whole thing was resolved to the BBC and the Daily Mail and the Express's embarrassment earlier this year when nothing happened to Lineker? Why are we talking about that when we should be talking about the shame and scandal of another politician. Now, for what it's worth, I think Lineker will probably be off-boarded at his next contract negotiation. I don't think you can have somebody this 
politically volatile or outspoken in the current journo political climate, surviving this number of sort of front page stories and scandals and, and what have you. I don't think that's right. I would like to see him flourish. But I just don't believe that in this country, with the machinations and the mechanisms of right wing media dominance as, as they are, I don't think he'll survive his next contract renegotiation. I hope he does, because, you know, it'd be great to Stick a couple up back at the Mail and the Express all over again. However, I don't think it will. But for me, the wider question is, why are we not focusing on the myriad scandals of all of these cabinet ministers over here? Why is this even a conversation about this guy? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs>